case you missed it in class, here it is again. This is the shortcut or the power rule for finding the derivative of some polynomial function. We used to do limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Remember, Ms. Stewart, way I back remember. three days ago, back when you first learned how to find the derivative? But now we have discovered there is a shortcut way of finding the derivative. And it's often referred to as the power rule because, as you know, to find the derivative, and I'm going to use official derivative notation. What do you think, Ms. Stewart? Newton's notation. Right. Very it's good right. choice. You're related to Newton, aren't you? That's what they say. Right. So this f prime, of course, means derivative. And the power rule simply is you take the power, 5 in this case, multiplied by the coefficient, so 5 times 4 is 20, and then you subtract 1 from the power. What could be easier? Should we do the next one? Let's do it. 3 times negative 8, negative 24, x, subtract 1, squared, 2 times 2, 4x, to the 1, I'm not going to write it. You know that there is a 1 there, actually. Oh, this one's a little bit funny. There's really a 1 here already. So when I multiply, I end up with negative 1, x to the 0. No x's, really. It's just negative 1. And a constant all by itself is just 0. The derivative of a constant is 0. And actually, it makes sense. If I were to graph the line y equals 9, it's just a flat line. It has a slope of 0. So there you have it. We have three functions here. Let's sketch the derivative of each one of these functions. Remember, derivative is the same as slope or rate of change. I want to sketch the derivative as a function. It's a function in its own right. So let's look at our original function, f of x. What can you tell me about the slope of this function, Mr. Haas? Looks like zero, it's I think. zero. So that means the derivative equals zero everywhere. I could even say f prime of x equals zero if I want to. Let's look at this guy. We have g of x. It's a linear function with a positive slope. What do we know about linear functions? They have constant slopes? They have a constant slope. So my derivative, g prime of x, is going to be something constant and something positive. Boom. Something like that would be my g prime of x. h of x, again a linear function. Constant slope, this time a negative constant slope, which means its derivative is going to be negative some constant. I don't know exactly what, since I don't have any scale, but it would look something like that. And there you have it. I'm going to sketch the derivative of three more functions. What do you think, Ms. Stewart? Great idea. Who wouldn't want to sketch the derivative of functions? I mean, I could do this all day long. I could, I too. I could have a party where I did nothing but sketch derivatives. I'm coming. So here we go. Well, that's one guess. OK, so here we go. Uh, here's my first function. It's f of x. It looks like some kind of quadratic, I would say. I always try to look to see where the slope is 0. The slope is 0 right about there. So I'm going to plot a point right on the x-axis because I know, and I say this a million, grillion, billion times, that the y value of the derivative is the slope of the function. The y value is 0. The slope of my function is 0. So then I'm going to check out the slope on this side. Well, it looks like a very negative slope. And the slope is getting, what do you think is happening through the Daniel Stewart? It looks like it's getting less and less negative. It's getting less and less negative. So I want to draw a picture of something that has a very negative y value that is getting less and less negative. So I have to start very negative. I'm getting less and less negative. I have to hit my point there. On this side, it's slightly positive, mm -hmm. the slope and the slope is getting more and more positive. So my derivative must be positive, getting more and more positive. And that is my derivative, f prime of x. And look, it's a line. Looks like a line. Interesting. Quadratic becomes linear, the derivative. There's another function, another quadratic. It's going to look quite similar. Slope is 0. I'm plotting a y value of 0. Slope is positive getting less and less positive, the slope is. So I'm going to start positive. I'll get less and less positive. 
the slope is negative, it's getting more and more negative. So that is my derivative. I'll call it g prime of x. What do you think? Looks good. And the last one, a little trickier, it's some kind of cubic. There's two places where the slope is zero. Right there, right there. The slope is negative, and it's getting less negative. It's getting closer to zero, the slope. So uh, my derivative should be very negative, getting closer to zero. Between here and here, the slope is positive, getting more positive, and then getting less positive, where it turns to zero. So my derivative should be a little positive, and then go back down to zero. And finally, my derivative, no, I'm sorry, the slope is getting is a little bit negative, getting more and more negative. So my derivative should have a negative value, getting more and more negative. And that is the derivative. Here's kind of a kooky function, to oh, borrow yeah. one of Mr. Haas's terms. Kooky? Kooky. It's pretty kooky. It's pretty kooky. But we can still find the derivative and sketch that derivative as a function in its own right. Let's do what Mr. Haas did and find those anchors where the slope is zero. So I know the slope of my function is zero there, so my derivative is going to have a value of zero. Slope of my function is zero right there, so my derivative has a value of zero. Slope of my function is zero here. There's another kind of anchor, I think of it. Slope is zero, so my derivative has a value of zero. All right, and then I kind of look in each region in between my places where my slopes are zero to see what's going on. So right here, it looks as though my slope of my function is very, very steep and negative, and getting less negative. So I'm down in the negative zone, getting close to zero. Here my slope is positive, okay, just a little positive, getting steeper, and then getting less steep and coming back to zero. So more positive, less positive, zero. All right, now I've got a negative slope of my function. It's starting out just a little negative, getting steeper, and then coming back to zero. So we've got a little swooping of the derivative. Again, positive, coming back to zero. And here it's negative and getting more and more and more negative. Now, I don't know exactly what the derivative looks like. I don't know exactly how it's interacting with the original function. We're just doing a loose sketch of what I think the derivative is going to look like. And let's call that f prime of x. Derivative of f of x.